What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back again with another video. And before we get into this reaction, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that reached out to me on Instagram. Um, yesterday, I had the unfortunate news of finding out that uh, my uncle that we hadn't seen in close to 10 years, but uh, we was able to actually finally get in contact with him. Uh, he passed uh, yesterday and uh, it was a, a tough day for me and my family um just dealing with that whole situation I, I may make a video talking about it at a later time um but um it was it was a very tough day yesterday and and um i really do appreciate all the kind and reassuring words you guys showed on youtube and on instagram and wherever else you hit me up at i really do appreciate that um it's just one of those tough situations where you know you finally see something out see someone after so many years and and unfortunately you see them on their last days um the one thing i am thankful for is i was able to see him one more time before he passed over so yesterday i just kind of needed a a day to kind of console my mom and and be there for the family so i appreciate everyone that uh hit me up once again but um I, I wanted to get back to doing videos for you guys because this helps me this helps me you know get through the times the, the bad times i'm going through because this is therapeutic reacting with you guys having these conversations uh i love doing this because you guys love you know love watching me and joining in on the conversation so uh you know i needed this because this is part of my therapy so we're gonna get into this one Thank y'all so much for all the love and support you guys were showing these couple of days. I really do appreciate it. Um, but we're going to check out 10 current WWE stars once saddled with terrible gimmicks. Now, it happens. It's it's kind of part of the, the territory in wrestling where not every person that comes into the business, they're going to have a good gimmick. A lot of times, their gimmicks are usually awful before they find something that actually works for them. So uh, we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right into this one, man. You're currently experiencing a bit of a renaissance where it feels like everything is firing on all cylinders. The crowds are huge, the storylines are largely inspired, and the vast majority of the roster seems to have a firm grasp on their characters and creative direction. Mm -hmm. For a fair few of them, though, that wasn't always the case, Gosh. since under a previous regime, they were tasked with trying to pull off some impossibly shoddy personas. You'll soon see how successful they were. I'm Adam Pacitti from mm -hmm. Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 current WWE stars once saddled with terrible gimmicks. Join us. Number 10, Drew McIntyre. Yep. The brooding, ultra serious Scottish psychopath has been one of WWE's most consistent performers since returning to the company's main roster in 2018. Factual. It's been quite the startling turnaround <laughs> because Drew McIntyre's WWE career was going nowhere fast when he was deemed expendable in 2014. The man once dubbed the Chosen One by mm -hmm. Vince McMahon himself had been considered a future WrestleMania main eventer and world champion, but lost his way and wound up up playing second fiddle to Heath Slater in the three-man mm -hmm. band group. 3MB were a fun stable and had their moments, yes, but it was a mid-card gimmick all the way and had a very obvious shelf life from the get-go. McIntyre never looked comfortable goofing off and playing air guitar in those leather pants, and there's a reason WWE never really brings up this period of his career. As Reflecting on his time as a rock star ripoff years later, Drew admitted that it was a somewhat mortifying experience, though did concede that it showed him how to take things less seriously and credited it with him getting to move out of his comfort zone. Hmm, do I smell a reunion? No, wait, that's dog crap. Number nine. Hey, he is definitely, once he left WWE, made his name, made a bigger name for himself and came back to NXT and then they brought him back to the main roster. Um, he it, it benefited him. He had to be one of those individuals to step away and then come back and be better for it. And right now, Drew McIntyre is a bona fide star. He's one of the top guys in the company, and he's been killing it. He's been knocking it out the park. He's fantastic. He is. And I'm glad he re-signed. Hopefully, they gave him a large amount of money because the guy deserves it. And uh, he's, he's knocking it out the park. Drew McIntyre has become arguably a lot of people's favorite wrestler right now it's fantastic love what they're doing with drew 
glad that he was able to overcome that initial start. Natalia. Speaking of bad smells, remember when WWE gave third generation member of the legendary Hart family Natalia the gimmick that she had nasty flatulence? Ah, oh, the good old days when WWE creative Awful. really was geared towards an audience of one. The daughter of yeah. Jim the Anvil Nightheart is these days one of the most respected veterans on the WWE roster, a dependable ever-present who could be counted on to do anything from guiding an inexperienced rookie mm -hmm. through an early TV outing to competing for a title in a headline bout. She can pretty much do it all, but back in 2012, the best WWE creative could come up with for her was a pumping problem. Natty Nightheart caused fellow wrestlers and even referees to gag on her stench, but beyond the gross-out factor, I'm not really sure the gimmick had much of a purpose besides making Pointless. a deranged billionaire laugh like Robert De Niro and Kate. Yeah, this was they 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 ruined Natalia. They didn't give a crap about her legitimately. Fear. The former women's champion quietly dropped the gimmick and soon joined forces with Hornswoggle and the Great Carly, which is pretty much the only time that particular scenario can ever be seen as an improvement. Bats. Number eight, <laughs> Chad Gable. Oh, a former man. Olympian who can have a tremendous match with anyone, Knew Chad Gable really list. does feel like the second coming of Kurt Angle, at least when it comes to his exploits between the ropes. Mm -hmm. Gable can entertain and create emotion with his performance from bell to bell and is Bats. currently one of the very best in-ring performers on a roster that is certainly not lacking in that department. At some point, however, somebody must have thought Chad was lacking a bit of flavor and decided to give him an image change. During a feud with Baron Corbin, the 5'8 Gable was rechristened Shorty Gable, which then became Shorty G. One of the worst repackaging of someone ever, bro. Like, they legitimately just... Sometimes it makes you think that Vince just had a board, like a dart board, and he would just have some of the worst gimmicks, and he would just throw darts at him. Whatever stuck, he was giving it to that wrestler. This was awful. And now, Chad is doing some of the best work he's ever done in WWE. Love what they're doing with Chad Gable right now. He ditched the amateur singlets for a garish combination of basketball-style shorts, vest, and sleeves. You would assume the merciless bullying about his supposedly hilarious lack of height would lead to something, I mean, nope. anything productive, but it really didn't, and after predictably fading from TV, he denounced the gimmick on air and returned to his previous guys. I suppose, if nothing else, those 10 boxes of Rise Above Size t-shirts I bought could be worth a hell of a lot of money someday? No. Almost definitely not, but hey, at least I'm a shoot six foot four. Number seven, Dijak. Oh, it has been heartening to see Dijak get the chance to once again show what he's capable mm -hmm. of these past couple of years. Bags. Granted, it's been on NXT and not main roster WWE TV, but the man himself might be just fine on the third brand, considering what happened the first time oh, he was called goodness. up. The big man was one fucking great value bane over here. I, oh, my retribution was... <laughs> oh my they did die jack so dirty but i'm glad he's getting the love and appreciation he's been getting uh recently it's crazy what the power of getting rid of old vince mcmahon can do for a lot of wrestlers characters and gimmicks one of the masked members of the pitiful retribution stable a pandemic era idea that was clearly not well thought out ahead nope. of time and is roundly regarded as one of the worst factions in wwe history t-bar and regular tag partner mace may have lost their masks but their run barely got off the ground when it came to a screeching halt t-bar then floundered on main event for an age before Shawn michaels and triple h gave him a lifeline down in orlando yes. dijank publicly noted how grateful he was for it revealing that he used to tearfully stare at his phone expecting to be future endeavored while treading yeah. water as T-Bar. He also noted that his time in retribution taught him resilience and to have perspective, which ironically sound like yeah. rejected retribution member names. Number six, <laughs> Baron Corbin. Another multi-talented performer who has been given a new lease on life thanks to NXT is Baron Corbin, whose tag title winning team with Bron- And this is, this is a good, this is another person that was had a, a good promise in NXT and then got to the main roster. They didn't really know what to do with him. Started floundering and it, it just, it was bad gimmick after bad gimmick after bad gimmick. And then they brought him back to NXT and it seemed like he was finding his footing there. So once again, the 
power of getting the old man Vince out of here. <laughs> Breaker brought out the lone wolf in him once more. Prior to re-emerging in NXT, Corbin had endured a series of gimmicks that were mm -hmm. um, memorable, if not necessarily good. Awful. First, there was Constable <laughs> Corbin, the ubiquitous raw authority figure who wrestled in dress pants, shirt, and waistcoat. Stupid. This is the bloke they chose to retire Kurt Angle, Stupid. lest we all forget that travesty of justice. <laughs> a switch to SmackDown meant a changing gimmick, and the Constable became king, feuding with Roman Reigns in a rivalry that saw both men doused in dog food. Stupid. The only way after that was up for Happy Corbin, who turned his fortunes around after being declared broke and wound up being managed by JBL, who presumably taught him the art of hazing rookies. So it's been a busy five or so years for Baron Corbin, whose character certainly had a well-defined arc, but this succession of iffy gimmicks definitely contributed to the feeling that he needed a change of scenery for a fresh start. For sure. Number five, Michael Cole. Yes, I appreciate that some of you may not consider longtime WWE announcer Michael Cole a star per se, but the man who has been the voice of WWE for the better part of the past 15 years is an inescapable part of the company's presentation. These days, it's just lovely to see Cole receiving plaudits for allowing his genuine love of professional wrestling, a term he's actually <laughs> allowed to use now, come yeah. to the fore. Be Michael Cole was insufferable, but I don't think it was largely because of him. I think it was largely because of how they booked him and what they wanted him to say and do. He was in suff It wasn't even good heel heat. It was like, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Like, change the channel because of how they had him doing commentary and what they had him saying. Now he seems more natural. It makes sense. And Michael Cole is coming to his own as a, a lead commentator and I love what he's been doing. It's fantastic. Because for the longest time, Michael Cole was viewed as little more than the mouthpiece of Vince McMahon, yes. who would direct the commentator on what to do or say via the backstage gorilla position. It was also McMahon's decision to turn Cole heel and make him one of the main focuses of WWE Stupid. television in 2011. A total turnoff for anyone with taste, Michael Cole's reign of tyranny on the Raw brand, which saw him seclude himself in the custom-built coal mine and target broadcast partners Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler, among other shenanigans, was simply excruciating. Yes. Cole is very good at his job and, to some, may have been an effective heel, but it hurt his credibility with the audience and nobody really ended up benefiting from the heat he generated. Facts. Number 4. L.A. Knight yeah. One of the great successes of the Paul Levesque era, and boy am I already sick of saying and hearing that, has been the meteoric and organic rise of L.A. Knight. Mm -hmm. The man formerly known as Eli Drake Drake's popularity is down to his natural charisma and ability to connect with the audience, something that didn't really come across too well when he was called up from NXT to the main Ooh. roster. Debuting on the SmackDown brand as Max Dupree, Knight was presented as a talent agent for the maximum male models, Marseille, Mansoir, and Maxine. Unsurprisingly, having everything that worked for him previously stripped away from him did literally DOA. As soon as you saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, he's screwed. <clears throat> he's about to get featured endeavored. But luckily, things happened the way they did, and he didn't. I'm going to keep saying this. Getting that old man out of there saved a lot of people's careers didn't exactly fill the man with confidence. In fact, he initially thought the character pitch was a rib and clashed with Vince McMahon on Max Dupree's presentation. McMahon subsequently removed LA from the equation, and according to Mansoir, Knight was almost fired due to his portrayal. But mm -hmm. the fact is, it was never a good fit and was never going to work. No. Surprise, surprise, when the situation changed and Levette grabbed the reins, LA Knight started to shoot up the card and yep. hasn't looked back since. Yeah. Number three, Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews is the sort of pro wrestler whose talent really should speak for itself. Mm -hmm. A high-flying powerhouse able to do just about anything with ease, Crews is an exciting and dynamic performer who perhaps hasn't always been given the opportunity to show his abundant abilities. In the run-up to WrestleMania 37, Crews began doing a new gimmick where he embraced his Nigerian heritage. This. That's all well and good, of course, but this was WWE in 2021, and Apollo acknowledging his roots was handled with all the Subtlety of Saba Simba. It, Speaking yeah. in an exaggerated accent, which he later admitted to having difficulty doing, Cruz was flanked by military men, <laughs> carried a spear to the ring, and claimed oh, to be a member God. of Nigerian royalty. Yeah, it was just like, what are we doing, bro? Uh, you could see right through. I'm like, what is this? Oh, you can turn Apollo heel, but 
Give him a gimmick that's not just so fucking blatantly stupid and Loki kind of offensive. Like, what? Come on, man. It wasn't great, to be honest, though clearly some people were fans of the shift because Apollo was booked to beat Big E for the Intercontinental Championship in a Nigerian drum fight, naturally, when they of clashed course. at the Showcase of the Immortals. Once his 124-day reign came to an end, however, so too did the enthusiasm for pushing the character. Yep. Number 2. Luke Gallows Drew Hankinson may have oh, always man. looked like a grizzled veteran, but the man was actually only 22 years old when he made his main roster WWE That's debut crazy. as the fake Kane back in 2006. That gimmick was short-lived, but Hankinson came back a little over a year later as Festus, the oh, slack-jawed tag team man. partner of his handler, Jesse. Who remembers this? I remember this, bro. He was like, he, he, it's like he was in this trance before the match. But once, like, the bell rung, it's like he just turned into a monster. It was, it's a weird gimmick, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> See, seemingly comatose 99% yeah. of the time, Festus would spring into life as soon as the bell rang, transforming into a rampaging, almost unstoppable giant who was focused only on taking down his opponents and winning matches. Hell, the first time he lost a match was when he passed out to The mm -hmm. Undertaker's Hell's Gate. Despite this, it wasn't like WWE had any major plans for a character did, that was bro. decidedly one note. Hankinson eventually <laughs> dropped the Festus persona and was repackaged as Luke Gallows, a member yep. of the Straight Edge Society that had been cured by group leader CM Punk. The good brother has since made a career out of playing the menacing muscle in tag teams and stables. <laughs> well, that and popping the boys in the back, but he's done some wrestling here and there too. Number one, Cody Rhodes. Oh, Cody Rhodes returned to WWE at WrestleMania 38 Great as a fully one. fledged main event level star, having made the decision to leave the company almost six years earlier in order to rebuild his name outside of WWE. Prior to requesting his release, Cody's time in WWE had been a story of highs and lows mm -hmm. and gimmicks and pushes that didn't quite pan out. The nadir for the American Nightmare was Stardust, the face painted supervillain that made Rhodes, in his own words, feel dead inside. Despite hating every minute of portraying Stardust, Cody did give it the old college try and yeah, seemed committed to the role, at least initially. But after being in the costume for close to two years and doing much of nothing in that time, an increasingly withdrawn Rhodes decided that enough was enough and quit rather than wrestle one more match as the mm -hmm. Prince of Dark Matter, not a nickname that caught on surprisingly. It is a credit to the grandson of a plumber that he was able to so effectively rehab his reputation yep. after doing a silly gimmick that for some could have been a career killer. As it is, Stardust was simply a brief chapter in Cody's much talked about story. Yep, and it's one of those things where sometimes leaving is the best option because you can leave, get over in the independent scene, maybe even get over in another company and then you can come back and you're a bigger star than you ever was when you were there. Sometimes you have to do that. Especially with Vince or just, not even Vince, just in WWE in general, whoever's at the top. Sometimes you have to leave, make your name bigger than it than it ever was for them to really see the value. It sucks it has to be like that, but that's what happens. So, comment down below. Let me know some other wrestler gimmicks that you just thought was just complete, oh, just trash. Just as soon as you saw them on TV, you knew, yeah, get, get this off my screen. If it wasn't listening to this video, but I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm still going to be the YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.